Thank you, Mr. Scott. We're going to have you ready. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the Court. Prosecutors, Melanie Heem, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. First, let me apologize for any time during this trial I've been rude or sarcastic. I really tried not to be. I started my opening with, these are the facts, what are we doing here? And I closed it with, why would Guy Ann tamper with the murder man? I'm still hung up with both of those questions. Was this a prosecution of Melanie Heem? Or was this a defense of Guy Ann? The prosecutor has quoted a 1697 poet and basically said, well, you know how women are. This is nothing new. I'm surprised that she wasn't going to be burnt as a witch. But this isn't 1697. And emotions have nothing to do with this case. The knife was thrust so hard into James Barry's chest that it bent the tip. So hard. A 90-pound woman or an iron worker? A 90-pound woman or a butcher? All that anyone asks in America is a level playing field. Is it a level playing field when Guy Hand gets to wash evidence off his hands? Is it a level playing field when the DNA specialist is not given Melanie Eames DNA? Whether or not Guy Han's hands were cut is a, such an important question. And who is it left to? Dr. Boti, the skilled medical, medical examiner? Even Detective Oliver? No, 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 no. Some CSI kid? Oh, no, 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 those are creases. A little follow-up, have the hands washed, examined, find out if he has cuts in his hands. It's kind of important, because where would he have got the cuts in his hands if not from the knife and committing the murder? But no, there was never an investigation of this homicide. There was a conclusion by Detective Oliver. A conclusion. Okay. We have a jilted lover, it's 1697, you know who women are, hey, let's go get some coffee. This is serious stuff. This is taking an attempt at taking away a person's liberty. Were his hands cut in the process of committing a murder? And the murder may have been negligence, and it may have been accidental, and you name it. Maybe Hand isn't a bad guy. I don't know. The clothes of Guy Hand were not collected. We've got the prosecution putting on gloves for all sorts of evidence. We have 150 pieces of evidence. 150 pieces of evidence. The detective Oliver said, No, we didn't need the clothes of Guy Hand. The blood was obviously from James Barry. Why do, why do we have forensic labs? Why do we have experts like the ones that have been called? But Detective Oliver can look at blood and know where it came from. Well, well, that's that. Let's wrap it up. His clothing should have been collected and it should have been tested for DNA. 
You don't get to say, well, this is what probably happened, or this is what I think happened. No, that's not what a jury's job is. A jury's job is to determine if proof has been shown beyond a reasonable doubt. Not, well, she's a female, you know, emotion, she must have done it. Please. His clothes should have been collected and analyzed. There should be another paper bag, and the prosecutor should have been putting on gloves again. Yeah, it was very telling when Officer McMullen from Montgomery County went to do a welfare check. For starters, the easy one. The low-hanging fruit is when someone in a welfare check says, I'm scared. You say, ma'am, what's going on? Why are you scared? <clears throat> then they would have gotten the answer. I just saw my boyfriend slaughtered in front of me. I'm afraid of the guy that did it. But no, oh, you're scared? Okay, see you later. We're taking your car. You're stuck here. What kind of investigation is that? But there's more. If you look below the surface, what was the comment that Melanie Eve made to the officer on the body cam? It was, when am I going to be asked in for questioning? When am I going to be asked in for questioning? You know who gets questioned? A witness gets questioned. She didn't say, when am I going to get arrested? Because a killer wants to know when they're going to be arrested. This witness to a murder said, when am I going to be brought in for questioning? That's so telling. Melanie Eames' father said, yeah, there were numerous on again, off again. Sometimes he broke it up, sometimes she broke it up. Nobody got killed in those problems. There are numerous inconsistencies. Jeff Jodzikowski helps out Diane. Oh yeah, I saw him entering the room. Well, that was a little odd because he was paying attention to his dying friend. And when I ask Diane, you see, when he doesn't know the purpose of the question, he tends to tell the truth. When I ask Diane, where was Jeff facing when you entered the room? said he had his back to me. Remember the testimony. Guy Han said when he entered James Barry's room, Jeff had his back to him. Jeff doesn't know if he had blood on him or not. Nicola Barry, my heart breaks for her, but she's a wreck. What is her testimony worth? She was contradicted all over the place. She said that when standing outside, when the police removed them, they were shoulder to shoulder. She said every single second they were never separated. Well, Detective Oliver says, oh no, immediately the witnesses were separated. I don't have to impeach a witness for you to see when you're not being told the truth. A motive? Guy Han gave it to you. Not a motive to kill. A motive to be fed up. Oh yeah, if you watched when he testified. She, she almost lived with us. She stayed there four or five times in a row. Basically, she was mooching. Now, would they care that she's mooching? They sure would, because if you listen to the testimony of Jeff Jaredskowski, James's best friend had to pay rent to stay there. There was no free food in that house. The deceased best friend had to pay rent. And here's this moocher coming and staying four days in a row, five days in a row, doing the laundry, cooking, using the food. They were fed up with Melanie. Now, I'm not saying that Guy Han came out to kill her. On again, off again, mooching. Just get out and don't come back. We've had enough of you.
and he may have opened a mouth to Melanie Ian, and James Barry didn't like it. You can bet this was not the first argument over Melanie being there. And as Guy Han got nastier, James then got involved. I don't know if it was accident. I don't know if it was negligent. But if Guy Han did not stab James Barry, how would the tip of that knife bend? From the force she can exert? Or the ironwork? CPR certified. Deputy testified, first thing we did was we got him off the bed and got him on a hard surface. Guy Hand was certified in CPR more than 10 times. The number one, the first thing in certification, flat hard surface. Because pumping and pumping and pumping on a mattress is a facade. It's not helpful. And if that wasn't enough, this wound is squirting blood. And when you each, with every push, this blood is squirting out, who in their right mind wouldn't stop? Who that wants to help would not stop and, and just hold the wound as much as possible? You have a job and you're going to do it. My suggestion is, before you move on to any other evidence, you figure out why Guy M picked up the murder weapon and took it into the kitchen by the sink. And then the cops came in and he didn't have an opportunity to wash it. Because his testimony was, oh yeah, I was at the counter and they were all came pouring in. If he didn't want anyone to hurt their toesies, there were three tables in that room. Pick it up, put it on the table, and get out. You gotta have an answer to that. Look at him. Look at Guy Hand. The state's pointing, I'm pointing. Look at Guy Hand before you look to her. Get an answer to why. He picked up the murder weapon. He tampered with evidence. You know what? That's a crime. But Detective Oliver and his training didn't go there. He also testified on, I guess, impeachment that he was the last barefoot person out of the room. Whose feet was he protecting? Remember that testimony? He was the last one out of the room. So that attempt at an excuse really doesn't hold water. And Mrs. Barry, she's been through enough, but her testimony was she walked out behind him. I don't have to impeach her. I don't have to question her about misstatements. He tampered with the murder weapon. Family. He locked all doors. The glass doors were with a lock that could not be unlocked on the outside. The story doesn't make sense. Confession. Let me read from the transcript. Now, if you rely on your own understanding of that tape, this transcript was produced by the state, not by me. I'm going to leave out the niceties and the warmth and the concern and the love that Detective Oliver showed and just get to the substance. You were there, back patio for a while, I'm guessing. No. What do you think? Okay, we know the injuries that he suffered, okay, and that they hinted at the effect was you weren't chasing him, were you? No, no, no. Never been violent. The knife, just to confirm, you didn't bring that knife with you. No, that wasn't mine. Was it in the drawer? Yes. 
How long were you guys talking before you got the knife? Inaudible. I just threw it away and ran out the door. So you admit that you went over there, you got upset, you stabbed him. Is that correct? Inaudible. This is a state's transcript. It was just a little blood on my sleeve. Okay. Would you say that this explained to me? Was this why? Why did this happen? You kind of explained earlier, but that goes to the state of mind. And that's what people look at, especially the judges. That's what they look at. So you p potentially could do some jail on this. In horrible. That's fine. Just explain to me. People are going to wonder, why did she flee Florida? Why did you? I was just really scared. Inaudible. About how many, how many times did you stab him? I don't remember. It's not like I counted. More than once? Inaudible. What confession? What confession? Calling it a confession doesn't make it a confession. What this tape is, is a scared witness who saw the horror of horrors of someone being cut up in front of her. Was he standing between Guy Hand and her? Was he defending her? I don't know. In jury selection, I ask, why would somebody flee besides consciousness of guilt? Fear. Fear that she's next. DNA. No DNA from Melody Game on anything? Well, there's an unknown. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt does not include an unknown. Masking. A whole lot of blood from James Berry would mask blood from those cuts on Guy Hand's head. Oh, they weren't cuts? Are you convinced beyond a reasonable doubt because some kid said, oh no, that's not a cut? Does that convince you? In the jury instructions, the judge is going to instruct you about weighing the evidence. There are two I'd like to bring your attention to. Was the witness honest and straightforward in answering the attorney's questions? Both the kid from the crime scene investigation and Detective Oliver. I said, is it, day is it daylight? Their answer was, oh no, in China it's nighttime. Why were they so hostile? Why are they so insecure in their findings? Why did every question that I ask become a personal affront? I may not be the nicest guy in the world, but I wasn't being rude. And every question wasn't answered. Next, did the witness have some interest in how the case should be decided? Yes. Detective Oliver and the CSI had a very big interest in how the case is being decided. They don't want it to be shown that they blew it. Better to not give the DNA of Melanie Eve than for the DNA expert to be able to say, no, it's not here. The purpose of an investigation is to find the guilty parties, not to defend Guy Han. And the purpose of a jury is to see through nonsense. And the purpose of the jury is to not 
carry your heads in 1697 because she's a woman. The purpose of a jury is to decide. Not, well, maybe she did it. Perhaps she did it. Yeah, I can see maybe she did it. We took an oath. The oath is to decide. Was each and every element of this crime proven beyond any reasonable doubt? Not even.